Hello, my name is Tara Gannon. I'm a project officer for WICMIX and the project lead for Cancer Mind Care. This project is led by WICMIX in collaboration with Gippsland Regional Integrated Cancer Service, or GRICS for short, and Peter McCallum Cancer Centre. Cancer Mind Care is a self-help online platform providing Australia's first one-stop shop for tailored mental health support for people with cancer, their support people, and clinicians. So an innovative idea to create a self-help psycho-oncology online platform was formulated following initial discussions between Wickmix and Dr. Maria Fatanu and Professor Steve Allen from Peter Mac. I undertook an online appraisal to determine cancer psychology online platforms that were currently available and the types of support that they provided. So this revealed the absence of a specific online platform which provided tailored psycho-oncology content and support for people with cancer, regardless of their tumour type or stage, despite a compelling need. The psycho-oncology services at Peter Mac are limited and often reserved for the highest priority patients based on the severity of their symptoms and motivation to get help. Thus, access for those with mild or moderate symptoms can result in an eight-week waiting list or require self-funding to access private service providers. So as we know, these options may not be realistic for most people with cancer or even their support persons, especially for those living in regional and remote areas. So this led to discussions with GRICS, which highlighted further inequalities in psycho-oncology care. Their local scoping exercise of services revealed the absence of psycho-oncology support services available in the Gippsland region. So as such, GRICS identified the need to upskill their clinicians in psycho-oncology. Emotional and psychological needs remain a significant unmet need for people affected by cancer, resulting in undetected anxiety and depression. The psychological burden noted by blood cancer patients in a recent survey conducted by the University of Melbourne provides new urgency for remote screening tools that can rapidly identify distress and unmet needs during crisis times when face-to-face -face care is limited and there is increased pressure on service delivery, such as during the COVID-19 pandemic. Cancer Mind Care encompasses four different portals. The biggest one is the People with Cancer portal. So self-screening using validated tools produces a cancer mind plan, which provides tailored recommendations depending on the level of psychological distress identified. So people with mild or moderate symptoms are offered free low intensity interventions, such as self-management and online mental health courses. Whereas people screened as requiring high intensity psychological interventions will be directed to appropriate one-on-one -on -one clinician-delivered psychological services which are available to them. So the Peter Mac psychology team have written content for 10 different psycho-oncology areas which are commonly experienced by people with cancer. These include scant anxiety, body image, sleep disturbance and fear of cancer recurrence. Each topic also includes resources and links and five of the topics will include interactive animation style videos. Consumers have provided their input and suggestions on useful practical strategies from their own lived experiences. Next is the support persons portal. So this addresses the relationship dynamics between the person with cancer and the person supporting them, as well as challenges and emotions. There are also uh, links to um, other resources and of course support organisations available to them. The Clinician Portal provides upskilling resources and information on psycho-oncology care. And the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Communities Portal collates current mental health resources and support organisations with links. There is further work to be done on this piece in the next phase of the project. So now I've provided you with the background and overview of Cancer Mind Care. Let's hear more from Dr. Maria Fatanu and Steve Allen. So joining me today, I have Dr. Maria Fatanu, Head of Psychology at Peter Mac, 
and also joined by Professor Steve Allen, who is the Director of the Psychosocial Oncology Program at Peter Mac. Welcome, Steve and Maria. Hi. Thank you. Thanks for having <laughs> so, us. You're very welcome. So today, Steve and Maria are going to be talking to us a bit further about Cancer Mind Care. So we're going to start off with a few questions. First one is, how will Cancer Mind Care assist or improve your service delivery at Peter Mac? Steve. You know, it's really broad because what we're hoping for Cancer Mind Care is that it's essentially like our virtual shop front, if you want. So it's the place where people can come, especially people who haven't got direct access to clinicians at Peter Mac, and they can look at what's available in the psych psychosocial sphere. So they can go there, they can look at the services we've got, they can look at services elsewhere. You know, we're hoping to build it into a place that's useful for everyone to um, get an idea of how to access mental health Plus, of course, not only accessing it, all the online support too that Maria will probably say a bit more about. Perfect. No, that's, that is correct. Um, and in terms of then, yeah, for Maria, so who would benefit from using Cancer Mind Care? Oh, I think um, people with cancer would benefit from using it, carers of people with cancer and family members, friends and clinicians. So... It goes through some of the main experiences or some of the psychological issues that people with cancer experience, and it provides evidence-based interventions uh, that people can work through in their own time, uh, anonymously, uh, at home, at a time that is really convenient for them. Absolutely. Yeah, that is that benefit of the online being being accessible, available 24-7 as well. Um, and in terms of um, the people with cancer portal, would you be able to explain a bit more in terms of the screening tools that we've got as well? So in the when once someone logs on, they have an opportunity to do a questionnaire that will talk about their how they're feeling. And then based on how they're feeling, they will be allocated to resources that best meet their needs. Perfect. Yeah. Yep. So all tailored information and yeah, the resources, which Steve mentioned as well. Um, in terms of, um, we just touched on it in terms of accessibility. So Steve, how will it help people with cancer or even their support people um, who live regionally as well? So for instance, um, down in the Gippsland region where there isn't um, any access to that specialised psycho-oncology support. I think it'll be uh, incredibly useful for people all over Victoria, especially regional people. What a lot of people don't realise when they're dealing with mental health is that a lot of the stuff is the, the biggest challenges are actually that it's a maze getting into services yep. and that it's really hard, especially when you've got cancer. So when you've got cancer, you're getting all sorts of treatments, radiotherapy, chemotherapy, you're busy with appointments, you've got so many things on your plate, you're often tired, you're often slept badly. And sometimes people think that the last thing they've got time to do is to address their own well-being and psychological needs. And so the ability for people, especially in regional places, to jump on, have a look, see what the services are, access the basic stuff online or for their family and carers and friends and whatnot and of course their clinicians the ability to do that without having to go through all the rigmarole of ringing waiting online booking appointments waiting two or three weeks till you get your appointment traveling for two hours paying fifty dollars for parking it really can't be overstated i'm really quite excited about this the uh, cancer mind care website Fantastic. And I guess in the context of a lockdown as well, that's probably only um, highlighted some of those factors as well for people. I agree. Uh, you know, in fact, you know, I hate talking about silver linings because, uh, you know, at the moment I don't think many of us are feeling too many silver linings from COVID. But, you know, if there is anything, it's, um, it's, the, it's created the impetus COVID has created the impetus for us to transfer so many things online. Now, no one's for a second saying that that long term will ever replace face to face, but it's giving exactly. us the alternative, the combination, the ability to do what's most appropriate for the consumer, the person, the patient with cancer to, that suits their needs. And, you know, when you live in a regional area, I, I think your online needs uh, become even more um, predominant. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and in terms of um, the information that we do have on Cancer Mind Care, Maria, what are um, some of the psycho-oncology topics that we've included? The Peter Mac psychology team uh, worked uh, with consumers to develop uh, resources about, about the 10 most common problems that we see. So these include anxiety, depression, fear of cancer, recurrence, pain, body image, sleep issues and fatigue. 
yeah, we've covered quite a few. Yeah, and each is linked to additional resources and and things that and online uh, evidence based cognitive behaviour therapy, and we've also got some videos as well to help people uh, manage some of the the symptoms or the common concerns that they might be experiencing. Can I add something there too? You know, I think it's worth noting too that this is the beginning, beginning, not the end of a process. And so what we're hoping is that over time, according to need and according to feedback from um, our patients in the community and the clinicians, we'll develop more stuff. We'll develop further programs, further information. And of course, the whole ability to provide online therapies is exploding at the moment. And so I would anticipate in five years' time, this will have you know even more options than it has at launch. So uh, it really is the opportunity to grow and become uh, and you know add some key services in this segment or sector. I say. Yeah, very true, Steve. Yeah, it really is just the the starting point. Like we've certainly got some very solid. Um, you know, bare bones, so to speak, um, very meaty and, um, yeah, hope to certainly keep building on it in the future as well. So thank you very much for your time to explain from, yeah, certainly your perspectives, um, how Cancer Mind Care is um, going to work, um, yeah, now and certainly into the future as well. So from here, we still have plans to keep promoting and adding to Cancer Mind Care in the future. We were planning to film consumers in person and capture their lived experiences across five cancer psychology topics. But of course, with the current restrictions, it has been postponed for now. Stay tuned for further updates. A big thank you to everyone who has been involved in this project. Grix, Peter Mack, the Cancer Mind Care Steering Committee, and the many consumers who've taken their time to share their experiences and feedback during development. Don't forget to visit cancermindcare.org.au and thank you for listening.